cracking YouTube. Telling her that I love her. So I'm on the way to gym, jamming to my man, Bronsolino, Action Bronson. That's the only way I know how to jam on the way to the gym. And I'm like, you know what? I could use a good cry right now. Nothing gets me more pumped up than a little pre-workout cry. Let me throw on the new Frank Ocean album. Word. I go on to Spotify. That shit's not there. I'm like, I pay $10 a month. Hit me with the new music, Spotify. So I'm like on Google. I'm like, yo, where can I listen to the new Frank Ocean album? And, it, and it's one of those albums that they've been doing recently where this, the artist only signs with Apple Music. You know, it only releases on Apple Music for like the first three or four weeks or whatever. And I can't find it anywhere. Like this is the fucking interweb, 2016, and I can't find a fucking album. Are you shitting me? Sorry for cursing so much. But anyways, I'm asking you guys to help me out. Hook me up. If I've helped you out, help me out here. Please put a comment down low where I can listen to the new Frank Ocean album. Like, stream it. Because I'm dying to listen to it, man. I'm dying. And, uh, sorry. I know this is a fantasy football channel. So, welcome to the channel. Again, as always, you know who it is. Big dogs gotta eat. We're getting into some bold, bold-ass predictions. And I'm going to be splitting them up by division. So we're going to do one for AFC North, the AFC East, the AFC West, and the AFC Dirty South. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do one for the NFC in this episode or not yet. I haven't decided yet. Uh, so it's either going to be four or eight. Either way, I'll do the other, the other conference another time if I don't. Peace out, homies. good before we jump into the 2016 bowl predictions for this upcoming season i thought it'd be fun to get a little blast from the past because i did an article on the website doing a bowl prediction for all 32 teams last year so i want to bring it back and see how we did some of them are really good some of them are bad some of them were really really bad uh, so let's check them out all right let's kick it off in jacksonville where I predicted Mr. A-Rob's breakout. They hadn't had a thousand yard receiver in over his 10 years. And I said A-Rob would become that first one. Uh, he would round out a thousand yards along with eight touchdowns. Boom, check for the boy. Numero dos, let's move over to Kansas City, where obviously KC had that terrible run in 2014 where their wide receivers basically put up zero fantasy production. They signed J-Mac, and you know how much I love J-Mac. I said that he would put up more fantasy points in 2015 than the entire KC wide receiver core did in 2014. And he actually hit that number by one fantasy point. Another dub. Another one. Let's move it along to Houston. Now this one, I guess, didn't exactly hit, but I was close. DeAndre Hopkins would lead the NFL not only in targets, but receiving yards. He didn't hit both of those marks, but he came super close. Obviously, last year was his coming out party. He was third in targets, and he was third in receiving yards. So, I mean, I'll take half a point if you want to give me, like, 0.4 points, whatever. To Arizona. Um, Arizona, I predicted that they would have three wide receivers finish in the top 35. Now, keep in mind, when you're looking back on these, they're really easy to, you know, hindsight's 20, 20 It's easy to say, hey, that's an easy call. But no team in the NFL did that in 2014. Um, so I would consider this a bold prediction, and I hit that. John Brown, Michael Floyd, and Larry Fitz all wound up in the top 35. Another one. Seattle, we had Mr. Russell Wilstein um, increase his passing totals. I said by 50%, he'd go up from 20 passing touchdowns, and he would finish with over 30. That he did, ended up with 34. I'm on point so far, only because I'm showing you the good one. Atlanta, I uh, not that Julio Jones hadn't broken out before, but I predicted his major 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 coming out party i said he'd get over 1700 receiving yards and he'd become the number one fantasy football receiver now he did hit that 1700 mark with room to give 1871 yards on the season and he finished as fantasy wide receiver number two only behind antonio brown so that's another point three points for me i believe now let's get over to mr Jameis, famous winston I've said he would become just the third rookie quarterback ever to throw for 4,000 passing yards in a season. 
just the third ever, and he hit that number, 4,044. Carolina, Cam Newton leads all QBs in rushing yards and finishes as the top three fantasy quarterback in 2015. Boom. Another one of these to keep in mind because Cam was going virtually undrafted last year. I know I picked him up off the waiver wire before week one. He didn't have Kelvin Benjamin, so I do think this is a bold prediction. If you want to disagree, I don't care. I'll take another point. Uh, now let's move it over <clears throat> to some of the bad predictions. Demarius Thomas will catch 18 touchdowns in 2015, the most since Randy Mose. <clears throat> How that work out, Nick? Not good. I uh, I didn't expect Tom, uh, Peyton Manning to do his best Dan Orlovsky impression, but he did. Demarius wound up with six touchdowns, his least amount in a long time. This one's not even bad. Wait till this next one. Tennessee Titans, David Cobb would lead the AFC South in rushing touchdowns. Obviously, I wrote this pretty early in the preseason because he went down with an injury. I don't even think he started the year um, playing. <clears throat> Either way, we're just going to skip past that one because I'm kind of embarrassed. And the last one I'm going to show you quickly is that C.J. Spiller will be the highest scoring fantasy running back in the NFC South division. I think I was correct. If you were to kill Mark Ingram, Devonta Freeman, probably even Tevin Coleman, uh, Tim Hightower, Jonathan Stewart. Wouldn't be surprised if Mike Tolbert beat him, Doug Martin, Charles. Wow. Literally, if you take the opposite of what I just said, like Spiller would be the highest scoring fantasy running back in the NFC South Division, and said he'd be the least highest scoring, that didn't make sense. He would be the lowest scoring fantasy running back in the NFC South Division. I think we might have something there. I'm going to take a negative 10 points and call it even on the bowl predictions from last year. So, like I said, if you want to go check out the rest of them, I did one for every single team um, last year. You can go to the site, www.bigdogsgottoeat.com. Go to the search bar and type in just bold predictions, and you you guys are smart enough to figure it out. You get to see my face again. I apologize for the long intro at the beginning of that video. Hope you enjoyed it, but let's get into this year's bold predictions. Number one. You already know I love Martellus Bennett. My bold prediction for him is that he will score more touchdowns than, yes, Rob Gronkowski. Now, my thinking here is this. As I made this point before, Martellus Bennett's going to be basically an every snap player. Um, if not every snap, 85 to 90% of the snaps he's going to be on the field. He's an excellent blocker, an excellent pass catcher. Bill Belichick knows this, and he knows he's going to have to utilize him. Now, but what I did was look at red zone targets for the Patriots over the last few years. And what I found was when the Patriots had another, you know, really good tight end, pass-catching tight end, they utilized him a lot in the red zone. Um, Mainly Aaron Hernandez, of course, because I'm kind of comparing Bennett to Aaron Hernandez in the type of player he is in terms of an all-around, you know, receiver and blocker, even though Mark Bennett's way better of a blocker than Hernandez ever was. So what I did was look at Gronk's red zone targets as percentage of the Patriots, you know, uh, throws in the red zone or inside the 10-yard line as well, and looked at, you know, tight end number two. And some of the numbers are actually super interesting when you look at it. When you look back to last year, uh, the first guy up would be Scott Chandler opposing Gronk in terms of the other tight end. And Scott Chandler actually saw 16.2% of the Patriots' targets inside the 10-yard line. And when you go back to 2014, they had Tim Wright. Tim Wright would be considered their tight end number two. Gronk saw 17.5% of uh, the Patriots' targets inside the 10-yard line. Tim Wright actually saw 12.5%. So it's only 5% less targets, and I think we can all agree that Tim Wright is a fraction of the player that Martellus Bennett could be in this offense. Um, so as you can see, they're utilized pretty evenly in terms of the tight ends and their numbers inside the 10. Now I want to go back even further to when Aaron Hernandez was playing with Gronk, which is, you know, 2011, 2012. And I found a crazy, crazy statistic. In 2011, Aaron Hernandez saw 34% of the Patriots passing targets inside the 10 yard line. Gronk saw 14%. And Aaron Hernandez played in two less games. He played in 14 when Gronk played the full season 16. 20% less passing targets. Um, now, if there's ever going to be a time that Bennett is going to outscore Gronk, it's because he's going to see these crazy target numbers inside the 10-yard line. 
Bill Belichick and Tom Brady are way too smart not to take advantage of um, these matchups because obviously the best cover man on the defense is going to be all over Gronk, which leaves a huge mismatch for Bennett. Uh, it's going to be their second best coverage linebacker. They're not going to put a cornerback on Bennett. Uh, so I would expect him to see a ton of targets, a ton of mismatches. And Bennett's going to hit that double-digit scoring touchdown mark this year. Mark it down. You heard it here first. Actually, probably like second, third. We probably hear it a lot, but this is my bold prediction. So, for numero dos, we're going to head over to the wet, 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 West Coast and hit up the Oakland Raiders, where my boy DeAndre Washington is going to finish the season as a top 12 PPR back. Now, this is a long shot. I know. A lot of pieces got to fall right for this dude. Uh, but I actually believe in his talent, and I think he's going to get a ton of opportunity in that Oakland offense. They're a team that wants to run the ball a ton more. DeAndre's looked super, super, super good in the preseason so far. He just, uh, in their third preseason game, the dress rehearsal, um, he got a lot of time with the ones. He rushed for 55 yards on eight carries, a great yards per carry average. He also got into the end zone, got some pay dirt action on a dump off from Derek Carr. So you can see the chemistry building a little bit already. He's a great pass catcher, way better than Latavius Murray. Um, and just some facts about Washington, because a lot of people probably don't know him coming out of college. Washington's a small player. He's like 5'8", 5'9", 200, a little over 200 pounds. He's a small guy, but don't underestimate the dude. He uh, put up 24 reps on the bench press, the second most of all uh, running backs at the Combine. He had the fastest shuttle time among all running backs at the Combine. He was the third most elusive running back in the entire draft. Uh, he also scored in the 80, 82nd percentile for spark scores. So he's a super athletic, super strong, uh, compact into a small body. But we've seen smaller running backs succeed in the league and do well. Now, what I see happening, um, I was looking at some numbers from Latavius Murray last year. Murray did great in terms of his overall numbers, you know, volume, obviously. But his yards per carry in the fourth quarter was at 2.2. And from weeks 9 to 16 to finish off the season, his yards per carry was just over 3. I think it was like 3.2 or 3.3. So clearly, as the games went on and as the quarters went on, uh, it was it was a trend. Murray started to wear down, and I think this is where DeAndre Washington is going to get a lot of work. He's already going to get a lot of work, I think, as a pass-catching back. I could totally see him starting off as a Gio Bernard-type role, uh, where he comes in on a lot of third downs and he, he catches a lot of balls. Maybe not as much rushing work as you'd like to see him get. But I think as the season goes on and we see Latavius keep slowing down, DeAndre's going to get more and more and more work. Like I said, super athletic back. Uh, senior year, he rushed for over 1,900 yards. He had 16 touchdowns, and he was carrying the ball over 20 times a game. Um, so there's definitely room for him to be in every down back if the opportunity arises. Uh, he can handle the workload like he showed in college. So, yeah, just combining all those things together in terms of his athleticism, his production in college, I think the opportunity we will be there behind this Oakland line that's going to be a top three offensive line in the league. Um, hopefully something breaks right <clears> on <throat> Tavis Murray's leg. Hopefully something goes well for Washington and he gets in that starting lineup and I think the rest will be history. Also, a little fun fact, Latavius is on his contract year. Um, so for any of you guys in keeper leagues where you get to keep guys drafted late in the draft, which is what we do, DeAndre Washington is a superb pick for y'all. What's going on? Coming back for number three. So I'm sweating my ass off. Just had to cut my grass since like 99 degrees outside. Another reason I need to get my ass out of the suburbs. That's neither here nor there. For our third bold prediction, um, I will be moving to the Detroit Lions. We have Martellus Bennett scoring more than Gronk. We have DeAndre Washington as a top 12 PPR play. Right now, I'm going to say the three wide receivers out in Detroit. Anquan Bolden, Marvin Jones, and Golden Tate outscore the three receivers in Arizona. Michael Floyd, Larry Fitz, and Johnny Brown. So, there's a few reasons why. Numero uno, the way Matt Stafford and the Detroit Lions played at the end of last year, and the way that they played in the preseason thus far. Now, when you look at last year... Jim Bob Cooter obviously took over after their week nine bye, and Stafford absolutely went nuts. Went lights out, suns out, guns out, skies out, thighs out, finishing the season off on a 19-3 to 
to two touchdown to interception ratio, completing 70% of his passes over that span, set a career high in completion percentage for the year, um, and the Detroit Lions were totally on fire, at least their offense was. Now, what they're doing to build onto this, by the way, he was quarterback four in fantasy over that span, and uh, now they're implementing a new offense in terms of the no-huddle offense, which is going to be a huge uptick in plays for them. Last year, no team in the entire NFL threw the ball more than the Detroit Lions did. They threw it upwards of 65, over 65% of their plays on offense last year. Uh, so I could easily see Matt Stafford hitting over 600 pass attempts, being one of the top five heaviest passing offenses in the league. And now they're going no huddle. Last year, they were no huddle for 7% of their offensive plays. This offseason, this preseason, I should say, they've been no huddle for 62% of their plays already. Uh, so you could see the change in their offense. Now you have Calvin Johnson out. There goes 150 targets, and you have, you know, a banged up Eric Ebron. He's expected to be ready for the opener, but who knows? That could be even more targets for these three wide receivers. Um, so let me just fix this. I don't have any water. <clears throat> Whatever. Um, I'll do it for you all. <sighs> Gotta stay hydrated when making YouTube videos. Reminder for any of you out there. Um, right, so we have these guys with a ton of opportunity. It's going to be a ton of plays run there. Uh, and Matt Stafford looked absolutely great at the end of last year. Um, so we have these guys who, they also are very good in terms of staying healthy. I know Marvin Jones missed the 2014 season, the entire season. But besides that, Bolden, Tate, and Marvin Jones have all, they've combined to miss two games since 2013. Obviously, pro, uh, other than Marvin Jones's missed season. Uh, but that's kind of fluky if you look at all the other numbers because he's played so much of the other games. So they're going to be on the field. They're going to get a ton of targets, and Matt Safford's looking to build on a career year of his. Um, now, when we look over at Arizona, you know, there's a couple problems I have, and it's the way Palmer finished his year off last year. So from weeks 9 to 17, he was quarterback 14 of fantasy. So flip-flop with Stafford from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Um, he finished the season with eight interceptions in his final four games. That's including playoffs. So he was real shitty at the end of the year. And now he's thrown three more picks in just 22 pass attempts this uh, in this preseason. Obviously, it's a small sample size, and I'm not downgrading him or saying that he's going to be a terrible fantasy quarterback, but he's going a little too high for my taste, and I think it's going to build onto these wide receivers. And obviously, the other big problem here is the emergence of David Johnson as the cowbell workhorse. I say cowbell. We need more cowbell. We need more bell cow in David Johnson. And uh, last year when he took over the last five weeks of the season, when he became the bell cow, the workhorse, getting all the touches from 13 to 17 weeks, he uh, we saw the Arizona passing game dip down in volume. They went from about 35 pass attempts to 31. So that's something I, I'd see continuing into this year. They're going to have an incredible defense as always with Matthew back and all these, uh, all these moving parts. They're going to be very, very, very good. So I, I would assume that they're going to go pretty run heavy on offense. Um, so David Johnson should get a ton of attempts. Even if he's not running the ball, he's going to catch a ton of balls. Um, and obviously we have John Brown and Fitz a little banged up this preseason. They haven't really played in any of the in any of the games so far. I know Fitz is dealing with his MCL sprain. John Brown's had concussion symptoms on and off, which is kind of nerve-wracking, a little scary. You, you don't know what that shit could happen. He's back at practice, then he's got symptoms again the next day. So um, they have a lot of talent at wide receiver. So if push comes to shove, I could totally see them being cautious with one of these guys. Uh, just because they can be replaced. They have guys like Jerome Brown and, you know, um, other guys that can produce. Uh, so overall, you know, um, I see the Arizona offense taking a little bit of step back in terms of their passing volume. I see the Detroit Lions killing it with this uh, no-huddle offense and just the way they finished out last season, I could totally see big things. Because you have Golden Tate, who's one of the best slot receivers in the NFL, Anquan Bolden, who's been one of the best possession receivers over the last decade, and Marvin Jones, who's a Great deep threat, really talented, athletic dude who's going to blow up this year. Put all three of them together, and I think you have a ton of targets going around, and I think you see a ton of production out of Dem Trey. So <clears throat> I'm going to be a huge fraud right now, and I hope you guys aren't mad at me, but I'm going to wrap up the video there with three bold predictions. Martellus Bennett scores more than Rob Gronkowski, more touchdowns. DeAndre Washington is a top 12 PPR play this year, and... The three wide receivers out in Detroit will outscore the three wide receivers in Arizona in fantasy production. Um, uh, this is taking kind of long to do, so I don't want to do 
like five more bowl predictions because it's going to take forever and no one wants to watch it. Hour long video, no one's got time for that shit. I don't have time for it. You probably don't have time for it. Um, so thank you for watching as always. And I know it's officially draft season coming up. So if you have any questions, hit me on Twitter at BDGE underscore fantasy FB. As always, hit that subscribe, that like button, share with your friends, share with your kids, share with your wives, share with your grandparents' mother's cat's owner. It doesn't matter. And I will see you next episode.